Wow, here we are again, Brother Peter, with tidbits from the Word. In <clears throat> much study uh, today, we have come to the place to where we need to read the first 18 verses of the book of John. It's only a couple of minutes. Listen to this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, we have got to take the Bible literally, because it's written literally. What it says, it means, and what it means, it says. And so, number two, the same was in the beginning with God. Wow. Can you receive that? You have to receive it in your heart first, and then you can receive it in your brain. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. This is God, the God in heaven, talking with the Son. And the Son is speaking, and he is creating, and he is saying, God says, speak this, and he speaks it. And in him was life, and the life was the light of man. M-E-N, not just man, but men, all men, all mankind, that is woman too. The woman, if you remember, came from the rib of Adam. And so it's all the men and the women too. And, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. All that the devil has and the devil is cannot comprehend the word of God, cannot comprehend this Bible. If you are in the place where you cannot comprehend the word of God, then you are not in. You are still a child of the devil, and you are not in yet. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. See, the only way you can believe is coming through Jesus Christ. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. Now, this is John. This is talking about John. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Now, that's talking about Jesus. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. This is an amazing and an astounding uh, 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 thing that we find here. That this is the truth. That he was in the world, yet he was the world was made by him. And I've said this a thousand times on other things. That uh, Jesus and the Father and the Son were standing there in the throne of heaven. And God said, Son, speak this into existence. And he spoke the world into existence. He, he did the speaking. Jesus did. The, he was the speaking part of God. He was the voice of God in flesh came onto the earth. He came unto his own and his own received him not. What do you mean? What do you mean he came unto his own? He had a chosen a race that he came to, a chosen people that he came to through Abraham. But as many as receive him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. This brought the Gentile in. This brought the Gentile in. Because he said as many, that's everybody, that's anybody. Now it's more than just the Jew. It is Jesus came and gave his life on the cross for all peoples from day one, from Adam through uh, the end which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. This is the second birth. The first birth, you came from your mother's womb in that flood of water and blood. So you were born one time by water and blood. And, and you came out here, and here you plop, here you are. The doctor slaps you on the bottom, and you go to breathing. And now you're a live human being. And you're uh, also, you're a live human being that's not saved yet. Being saved is something that you have to ask God for. Now, a lot of people say, well, what are you saying, Brother Peter? If a baby dies, you go to hell. No, that's up to God. God knows that whole baby's life from the time that he took his first breath until he takes his last breath. God already knew his life. You say, you mean God knows a person's life? Yes, he does. He knew my life. And he allowed me to run rampant until the chain got so tight I couldn't step another link. I was at the end of the chain and it was tight and I was pulling against it and God said, I'm going to break that link. And God broke the link that I was hung in the world with 
and freed me so that I could become the person that I am now. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is fullness. Can you get any fuller? You can't get any fuller. If you get any fuller, you run over. And this is a fullness. He was full of grace and truth. There was no lie in him. There was no darkness in him. There was no time that he ever was owned by the devil. God was the one, his father. John bore witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. See, John, God opened the eyes of John to see back before creation. He gave him the ability to see Jesus with the Father speaking this world into existence. And of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. Wow. Grace for grace? What is he saying? Double grace. We have double grace. Jesus coming to the earth gives us double grace to come to the Father. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Wow. Last but not least, no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, hath declared Him. Wow. So the only way that you can see God is through Jesus Christ. And you will not see Him in person other than seeing the person of Jesus Christ. He is the representative in the flesh on the earth of God. He is that representative. And he came to represent it, it, uh, of it. Now that was John's record. Let's take a look over here at the great prologue, John 1 through 18, we just read. Now Matthew 22, 42 says this. He is only the world's greatest teacher. He is actually God. He is actually God in the flesh. Jesus was God in the flesh. It made a little lower than the angels. The Bible said he came and made himself a little lower than the angels. How, how, how does that uh, ring a bell with you? Well, he had a fleshly body. And in that fleshly body, he came onto this earth. Even though he had more power than all the angels because he was the one that made them. He only, the world's greatest teacher, actually God. Was he one of the prophets or was he the world's savior whose coming was foretold by the prophets? Why? Because he was the world's savior. All that John is discussing in the book uh, to the crowds and in these 18 verses, in these 18 verses now, John's given the whole picture of the whole thing. Let us study uh, this gospel with John's purpose, clearly in mind. Read it over again, John 20 and 31. Let us see how the plan is developed and how the purpose is shown as we read the book. Now, let's look at John 20. Let's go over there for a second and read verse 31. John 20 and 31. And let's see what it says right here. 29, 30, one more page, 31. And it says, But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, comma, the Son of God, comma, and that believing you might have life through his name, period. If you want eternal life, it's got to come through Jesus Christ. Otherwise, there is no eternal life. You may do all the works of all of the uh, cults in the world. What is a cult? I'm not trying to be derogatory, but anybody believes there's any other way to heaven other than through Jesus Christ is not a truth. It is what you could call a cult. It looks good. It looks real good. 
and feels real good but it's not heartfelt it's only physical and therefore it is not eternal it will die and go with you to the grave and to hell and you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven except through the name of Jesus Christ I, I, some people have said to me oh you're one of them Jesus freak yes I am I'm the only way that I'm going to heaven is through that Jesus that name Jesus so let's see what we see here now in 31 after we read the plan that Jesus is the son of God uh, John begins his wonderful record with Jesus the Christ comma uh, before his incarnation this was before he came to be the Christ. God did not send his son into the world that he might become his son. For he is the eternal son. He's the eternal son. He's the one that was with God. He's the one that spoke when the earth was made. Comparing the first verses of John with the other three gospels, we see how uh, differently it opens how uh, exalted it is it seem is omitting the birth of Jesus the son of man John begins before all worlds <laughs> listen before all worlds everything you see at night when you go out here you see the world of the stars those are the worlds where the stars are those are our worlds and then you see the moon that's a world what do we call a world? That's a sphere. The sphere, a sphere is a world. Uh, we are, have an inhabited world. Are there any other inhabited worlds? We know not. But this one's inhabited. And this one God took enough interest in that he sent his son down here that mankind could be saved and go to heaven and be with God forever. Let's read John 1, 1 through 18. We did. We read it carefully. And it opened like the book of Genesis. Jesus is portrayed as the Son of God. So was he in Genesis. In the beginning was the Word. Who was the Word? The Word was Jesus. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God in the beginning. In Genesis 1.1, he spoke the world into existence. Our Lord had no beginning. He was in the beginning. He is eternal. Christ was before all things therefore Jesus is no part of creation he's no part of creation he is the one that made creation he is the creator Colossians 1 16 Hebrews 1 and 2 the word was with God he is the person of the Godhead he is called the word Jesus is is the word that was with God in the beginning he came to declare God to tell out God as words uttered thoughts so Christ utters God's words how about that reveal the heart and the mind so Christ expresses manifest and shows God Jesus said to Philip listen to this if ye had known me ye should have known my father also John 14 7 while we're doing a big Easter plate at Faith Baptist Church LaGrange Georgia four times it would it would it would behoove you if you see this before Easter that you would uh, get on an airplane fly into Atlanta Georgia and and get a transit uh, to LaGrange Georgia and come to the Easter plane you look me up I'm brother Peter Hutchins you look me up I have a big house I'll put up a whole crowd and, uh, free of charge at my house I'll put up however many wants to crowd in here if they want to crowd in here uh, it comes to the wonderful announcement that all things were made by him and in him was life and the life was the light of men yes he was made flesh and dwelt among us the full claims of Christ are given here as truly God light of life declare uh, declarer he is a declarer of God the Father 
baptized with the Holy Spirit. You remember when he walked down? He was baptized or positionally already. But when the Holy Spirit announced to the world, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. That was for a reason to announce to the world that this was the beloved Son of God. It was already known that it was the Son of God. He was. And it was already so. But God spoke from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And that was the announcement of the Son of Man. John, John does not open uh, his book with the manger in Bethlehem. But before the world was formed, that's when he opens his book. In the beginning. Wow. In the beginning. Boy, when you hear that. In the beginning. Jesus was the Son of God before He came flesh and dwelt among us. In the beginning was the Word. And remember, Jesus was the Word. How like Genesis this book opens. Christ became what He was not previously a man. He became what He was not previously. He was not a man. So He became a man, but Christ did not cease to be God. He was God-man. Wow. He lived in a tabernacle of flesh. This, by the way, is only a temporary tabernacle from the day you're born till the day you die. <laughs> if this was what it was all about, we would have most men be miserable. We would be miserable people if it was all about this flesh. But it's not. It's, it was about this God-man, Jesus Christ. He lived in a tabernacle of flesh. And his, in 33 years, his incarnation came uh, from two Latin words. Is the uh, uh, caro, uh, meaning incarnation, comes from two Latin words. And uh, the caro and the fle is flesh. Caro meaning flesh. So Christ was God in the flesh. Uh, Man had sinned and lost the image of God. So Christ, in the image of the invisible, he was the image of the invisible, Colossians 1.15, came to dwell in man. No man could see God. Therefore, the only begotten Son, who was in the bosom of the Father, came to declare him to us. Even the witness of John the Baptist, a different in John's Gospel, in Matthew, he tells us of the coming kingdom. In Luke, he preaches the repentance of John the Baptist and the witness the light of men might believe. He points to the Lamb. The Lamb of God was Jesus Christ. In, uh, in chapter 1, 32 through 36, those are all the characteristics of the Gospel. Jesus is God himself in a human form coming to the earth Jesus is the witness the father of to men Jesus knew the father he lived with him in the beginning he came down to tell what he knew he wanted men to know the father as he knew him and the only way you can know him is by saying God I know I'm a sinner forgive me and I sin come in my heart it's Jesus that did it it's God that does it. If it was by works, people could fail. But if it's by statement, you can't fail. Because he said all you have to do is repent and ask. And it's that way, that's the way it is. How many religions we have today who are trying by works to get there and they're not going to make it. They are just absolutely positive and not going to make it. I need to hurry to finish this up right here within my time limit. He told by his words, he told by his deeds, he told by his character, he told by his love, but most of all, his dying on the cross, on the third day he rose declaring the witness is a telling. He's the only person that ever walked out of the grave and did not die again, went to be with the Father.
the only human body that ever did that. Uh, how how was Christ's words revealed? Uh, he came down uh, to the Jews and they received him not. He presented himself as as the king of the people, but he was rejected. All the book we see Jesus uh, dividing the crowds as he came and spake truth, and the crowds listened. Some believe and respect and and. John presented the results of faith. All of that prologue. By the way, it's by faith. The grace that God gave you and I to have enough faith to say, Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart. That's all. And you're ready. You're going. You're on your way. And now you have to learn some things. God did not send Christ into the world in order that he might become his son. Christ was his eternal son. And he came into the world. And Jehovah of the Old Testament, God manifested in the flesh. Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. In Luke we see Christ going down to meet man's needs. See him drawing men unto himself. 12 and 32. Remember that John is the witness to prove that Jesus is the Son of God in his writings. Wow, our time has come and gone. We'll see you next time. Uh, be sure and take my invite and come to uh, LaGrange, Georgia, uh, to the Easter play. Our our website is our website is uh, listen to this www.faith f a i t h l a g r a n g e dot com faithlagrange.com. My telephone number is 706-884-3100. And that's and the church office is open from 8 to 1:30 and you can uh, see about you don't have to have tickets. It's not a paying event. It ought to be, but it's not. It has uh, some over oh, well, right near right at 200 uh, active people in it. Uh, it is probably one of the best uh, renditions, uh, pictorial uh, pictures put on by human beings of the uh, Christ going to the cross and on his way through the Via Della Rosa and as he uh, carried the cross and gave his life for you and I going to the tomb, coming back out of the tomb. It is a very, very vivid pictorial, not only that, it has much fasting and praying in it. It has much study. It has uh, the most ardent leader that you ever met. And uh, it's uh, no foolishness. None. Not one second of uh, f frailty of, 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 of being, I can't say the word that I got in my mind, but it's no foolishness. It's all factual teaching and it's pictorial in that. Come and see it. Come to it. Uh, we did have some people uh, come in from uh, Chicago I think it was uh, last year or so. That flew in and came to it. So fly in and come to it. No matter where you are in the world, if you can afford it, it would be worth it. Alright. We'll see you next time. Right. Bye bye. Alright. I, I my thing is